Hey guys, Latoya here with She Talks, and I am so excited about this interview. I am sitting next to Ken. You probably know him from Revenge Body, super amazing spirit, and I can't wait for this interview. Ken, yes. tell the people, tell them your story. Okay. So I um, grew up in foster care. I started out um, taking care of my mom really, really early at probably like seven years old. And then um, eventually I got put in the foster care system because they felt like um, I shouldn't be taking care of my mom at such a young age. So I, um, at that point, I went to Ben Salem High School and then I became like very interested in design and stuff like that. So fast forward. Um, I went to FIT, some things happened. Um, next thing you know, I gained a lot of weight because of um, my mother's sickness. And then from that point, um, I went on a show called Revenge by with Khloe Kardashian because I answered an ad that said, we well, are looking for fat and depressed people. So there we go. <laughs> so let's let's stop right there. Uh -huh. Revenge Body, tell mm -hmm. people just a little bit about the show. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, get on the show uh -huh. um, and what season is it in currently? Yeah, so we're in season two. And basically I got the show because I um, basically ans literally answered an ad. My friend told me, because I was going through a lot of things at the time. And um, my friend Marcus Brazil, he's a celebrity hairstylist. He asked me to come out to L.A. Um, with him because I was struggling so much. And he had a bunch of celebrity clients he was dealing with at the time, and they were on reality shows. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to live that life because they were, like, flying on jets and doing all type of crazy stuff. So basically, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I researched reality shows, and it was an ad that said we're looking for fat and depressed people. I answered the ad, <laughs> literally. And um, me and the producers talked for hours on the phone, um, the casting directors at the time. We talked for hours. Ken, I know um, there's like an interesting part on Revenge Body, mm -hmm. um, this part where you went into the gym <laughs> and or something with this trainer. Like, right. tell me about that. So when I ran out the gym, I know exactly what you're talking about because um, they made so many memes of that thing. Uh, it was, I think that came into play when um, the the... They told me to walk in the gym. Like, mm -hmm. mind you, they just told me to go to the gym. So I go in the gym, and mind you, I had never been to a gym before. Right. And when I go in, I see Corey, who, mind you, he trained Michael B. Jordan in Creed. So, of course, right. anybody would be intimidated right. by somebody you just ever, getting Did in. you know that, like, when you walked yeah. in, who he was? Well, I knew who he was because I watched season one. Got it. I just didn't know I had him um, at that point. Got it. So I walked in, and I said, oh, my God. And y'all expected me to be in here with him? And get inside the ring? I said, oh, no. So I ran out because I'm like, this is supposed to be a workout show. So um, when I ran out, everybody was like, you got to go back in here. And I cussed all of them out. Like, this is supposed to be a workout show. If y'all got me doing some crazy shit, I'm out of here. You, you know was I mean? dead serious. Oh, I was dead serious. Very dead serious. Because I'm like, oh, this is a workout show. What y'all telling me to go in the gym for? I'm in the boxing ring. And when I got in that gym, Corey beat me to death. Literally, like I was like, oh, and then after that, I got to do a workout for like an hour and a half. And then um, I felt like I was doubted because Corey was like, um, you done. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he cursed me out, told me I was fake because my my pro. I mean, I was at that time like my Instagram was any everything was not authentic. I was saying I lived in Malibu when I really was like homeless. Like, really, I was lying my ass off and the people knew behind the scenes. And Corey was the one to be like, cut the BS. You know what I mean? So at that point, um, <laughs> at that point, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, and at that point, I worked out to the point where I was like almost passed out, and Corey was like, "You done?" And he walked away from me. And anybody knows Corey knows Corey. He don't play. Whether you his client, whether you his friend, family, he don't play at all. Like it's the no nonsense, no nothing. So he walked away, and when he walked away, I was like feeling like defeated. And anytime where I'm, my back is against the wall like that, I always like come back so um i think they didn't expect for me to pick up the rope and start jumping mm -hmm. because when i watched it back like everybody else i didn't know where they went i just knew i picked back up the rope mm -hmm. and started working out again and then when i saw the the footage Corey was like um larissa who's the ep of the show was like <laughs> was like i thought he was done and he was like he wanted bad and that was really how i, I did now our relationship throughout the show and even now is still so super tight just was talking to Corey yesterday so, like, what made you, like, up until when they called you for the show, mm -hmm. what made you say, now's the time for me to just tell my story? I mean, because prior to you sitting on that couch mm -hmm. with Chloe, it mm -hmm. had to be that aha moment where it was like, 
I gotta be honest at this point in was it before that or it because you no, had to say was, like it was that day. That day. Like because I gotta let it all out. Like what was that? Actually what happened was um I wasn't gonna tell anything. Like when they were like, Oh, you gotta talk about this, I was mm -hmm. like, Oh no, I'm not talking about that. And Chloe really sat me down and was like, Listen, you need to talk about this because if you don't talk about it, the world is. Like, and I can't protect you from that. So you need to, you know, let it out now tell your truth. and tell your truth because um, people will love you more for it. And not only just that, you'll feel better about yourself. And at that point, I decided to trust Chloe. And I wrote a blog post about it um, on the blog called Trusting Chloe. So um, that was a big pivotal moment. And not only just the show, but just my life, period, because I had never shared the stuff that I shared with her on that couch with anybody on this earth. Literally, like anything like my friends, family, everybody was just super shocked to even hear that stuff because nobody knew the real. But um, I did trust her because she shared a lot of stuff to, with me mm -hmm. that I couldn't Google. And I was like, wow, that was deep for you mm -hmm. to just share that like that. And then that helped me become more authentic. And Corey did the same thing. Like Corey revealed a lot of stuff about me and his mom and his past and mm -hmm. the things that he went through. And it made me be like, wow, I need to be more authentic. It's okay. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. it's okay. That's good. That's good. How do you feel now after now, it's out? Yeah, yeah, now that it's out, it's kind of like a, a, a love-hate kind of thing because um, I'll, I'll start with the good part first. The good part is that um, I feel way more comfortable with my life and I feel way more comfortable with just things that happen to me mm -hmm. because now I can help other people and I can use my life and my story mm -hmm. to help others. But the downside to that is, like, a lot of the media people, they aren't good like you. Like, some people take it and they twist it and they do yeah. other things with it. But I'm so used to it by now that it's, like, it's not even It don't even, even matter. Because yeah. you already told your story <laughs> and you already told your truth. So yes. that's yes. the good thing yes. that when you are comfortable with telling your own truth, mm -hmm. it don't matter. So if they twist it or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and you're comfortable. On top of that, and then on top of that, to have great mentors like Kim, Chloe, and, and obviously Corey, um, they've all had stuff where they've dealt with the media or backlash and stuff like that. So they have nothing but just advice and wisdom for me to do. And just like Kim always tells me, like, it's best for you to just, um, you know, keep working mm -hmm. and keep releasing content. It's your job to release content and, yes. and, and keep releasing content and products and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's their job to talk about it. Yeah. And talk about you. So just let them do their job and you do yours. And that's you what I'm awesome. Yeah. Thank oh, you're you. gonna be great. Thank you. Please thank you. Tune in to Revenge Body. Please yes. Do. Please yes. Do. Let's get us that rating, baby. Okay, so they said that you were like literally eating ice cream. Was that true? Yeah, it was true. I thought it was like I thought it was like they were joking. No, I was like, was he really no, eating ice cream? I was cream? really eating. I ate I, I had two um pints of ice cream and um I took a picture with the ice cream like and I think that's what made, me, made them call me back. So, I, yeah. So did the weight loss start then or like when you got on the show, did you go through the transformation? The weight loss definitely came while I was filming because actually prior to, I had never even walked worked out before. Even on the show, I was telling them like, um, even like I said on the show, I had never even walked into a gym besides the time when I went to go visit a friend who was working out. And that was like three years prior to me even filming Revenge Body. So I'd never been health conscious. I'd never been anything like that. And then when we started filming, I became very aware. What It wasn't like that in the beginning. Right. But eventually, I just started to really take the weight loss and the eating and everything really serious. And so um, to date, how many pounds have you lost? I'm down 50 pounds now. Um, I'm, I got some new goals coming up, but I'm going to leave that for later because I like to show first and tell later. So um, and so is it like a group of you guys or is it just one well, per season? Or? Well, each of us get um, an episode. Like we get, it's two to an episode, but um, we, it's, it was 17 of us and I think now it's down to like maybe 13. I know she fired a couple of people, but... So what, tell us, what was it like working? What is it like working with the Kardashians? I mean, I know that Kim is like one of your mentors. Right, right, right. What is it like? Is it really, you know, what people see on social media or is it kind of authentic? Is it like, what is it like? I think for, for me, it was really authentic because they helped me be authentic because I wasn't an authentic person before. So if anything, they made me become more real with myself and my, and my personality and, and everything. Because I think coming from a fashion background, you are taught to be more politically correct. You're taught to be more, you know, just just 
up and down. And I have like a funny charismatic attitude to me that's kind of like almost not acceptable and a little bit of ratchetness. And it's almost not acceptable in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I just hid behind this mask and made everything seem good. Mm -hmm. But then um, when I was introduced to Chloe, she was like, listen, you need to take down that wall. And that's what people love you for. Right. So that's what inspired the shift. And then when I met Kim, she um, tended to make me feel more comfortable with just like the business aspect mm -hmm. of things. So now that I'm combining both together, mm -hmm. I'm able to live more authentic and let my life be my career. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. You that was an open Come on, come on, come that on. Was that was an open eye movement. Ah! <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> So you speak mm -hmm. on fashion. Yes. Before the show, mm -hmm. we know that you had a career in fashion. Mm -hmm. You worked at some of the, tell the people some of the uh, stores and the uh, companies that you work for. Yes, I've interned for um, Oscar de la Renta Vogue magazine, Harper's Bazaar. Um, I worked for uh, Gucci for a while. I worked for um, a couple of, a lot of different luxury labels, Ralph Rucci, um, BCBG Max Azria. So it was a lot of different, I had a very extensive fashion background. So it was like you already kind of was living the dream that w folks would look at as the dream. Yeah. Why, mm -hmm. you know, why the sudden, you know, I think that you kind of went into right, a state of depression. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Yes. Coming from someone who already had a good career, right, whether right. you were doing internship right. or, mm -hmm. you know, it was a job. Talk a little bit about that depression. Well, I had a hiccup with the law um, around like 2012, 13. And I know a lot of the blogs have picked up um, the stories or whatever, but it wasn't as, as deep as they tried to make it seem because what happened was I was working at a, um, a retail store. And what I did was I had a credit card and I racked up that credit card by just like being stupid and frivolous with the money. And I wrote a bad check to the credit card company and the credit card company pressed charges against me. Had I would have been smart and kind of knew the back end of stuff, I would have just paid it off and not had to even deal with it. But I was, I didn't know anybody that was a criminal or, you know, dealt with anything like mm -hmm. that. So what happened with me was I just went into shock and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go in and do whatever. So I wound up being arrested. And that made me extremely depressed because I never dealt with legal issues. My mother, at the time, I was taking care of her full time. And then when she passed, it was like extremely difficult for me because she was the person who bailed me out of jail at that time. And she put her whole life savings up to do that. So for me, it was very depressing. And then at that point, my life just became this downward spiral. And my only thing that could get me out of that was food. So that's how, and how the whole thing happened. Wow. You you truly have a story. You truly are inspiration to Thank so you. many people so that are, you know, whether they're going through the depression stage and feel like they can't get out. I mean, your story is truly an inspiration. So I can see why, you know, they picked your story to, you know, be on the show. Yes. I mean, we wish you nothing but the best. So, so what's next mm -hmm. for Ken? So what's next for Ken? I have the magazine coming out and I'm my fans, my, I call them my Ken dolls. My Ken dolls are so patiently waiting on this. Everybody is because it's been such a work in progress. We wanted to um, release it as soon as the show aired, but um, some things happened and some bigger opportunities came. So we had to definitely push it back. But um, we definitely are working on that. And that's the biggest thing. Um, also, we're turning the blog in from like going from... Um, more personal stories mm -hmm. to more celebrity driven. So now instead of just me talking about the different topics that we talk about, like why, you know, how to sleep, people sleeping with their best friends, exes, and juicy topics like that, now we're getting celebrities to speak on if that may have or may not have happened to them before. Okay. So now it's more celebrity driven than just me. So um, I'm really excited about that. So just expanding everything mm -hmm. into a bigger um, empire, actually. Mm -hmm. And just um, later we're looking at product and stuff like that too so then do you think mm -hmm. that you will have a section in that magazine and i think just because it's not enough of it mm -hmm. um where you have like real people that was just like yourself oh, before yeah. getting into the industry oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know to yeah. tell and share their story absolutely we we definitely have um moments where we do things like that we run contests with like people who follow us and like people that share their stories with us too, and we're gonna share a part of that. I think that's more for the blog because the magazine we kind of keep tailored to that one specific situation that um, you know just brings a little bit more exposure. But for the blog, definitely we have articles like that all the time, and we take pictures too. Like mm -hmm. if you want um, to to get a feature or or you feel like you have a certain situation that's mm -hmm. unique and you want to get the word out of it, absolutely. Can she throw be in the magazine? Absolutely. 
think she thought she I ain't no, I'm not a celebrity yet, okay. but you know, yes, you are. I would you love got this to. Big beautiful couch and this Hang big beautiful. Come on, it's Hezekiah. Beautiful. Hezekiah, come on, bring them in. This guy, <laughs> just, spirit, uh, just go on. <laughs> there we go. Ken, we appreciate you doing this interview. You, you are super dope. We Thank wish you, you so nothing much. but the best. Thank you. I oh, tell the people where they can um, see the show, yes. when the season starts, all that good yes. stuff. So the season had already started. It's um, Revenge Body with Khloe Kardashian on E. You can catch the um, episode. My episode was the first, the premiere episode, which was the first episode. Premiere. The premiere. Come on, come on. Thank Chloe. But anyway, um, <laughs> and God. Um, so yes, you can check that out. And you also can catch everybody else's stories. There are so many friends and People, my Revenge Body family, um, catch them out too on um, Sunday nights, uh, I believe, at 9, I think. Um, and you also can follow me at Kim Butler World on Instagram, Twitter, and everywhere. And then you also can uh, follow us, our blog, and um, at KimButlerWorld.com and subscribe so that we can get you in details for the magazine. Perfect. Y'all heard it. <laughs> Ken, she talks. She talks. <laughs> there we go.